Just going to check your eyes and make sure you're okay. And we'll go from there, okay? okay? Now, do you have any head injuries or anything? Uh, no. Are you epileptic or diabetic at all? Mm -mm. You wearing contacts for color or anything? No, but I'm not going to take any. Welcome to U.S. Corrupt Cops Channel. In this gripping video, we delve into the lives of corrupt police officers as they confront the harsh reality of their shattered careers. Witness the struggle, the remorse, and the hard-hitting truths these individuals face after their fall from grace. Stay tuned for a powerful exploration of redemption, consequences, and the pursuit of justice. Captain Amanda Caden of the Cincinnati Police Department found herself in a difficult situation when she was pulled over for repeatedly crossing a yellow line and swerving on the road. You got your license insurance on real quick? Yeah. All right, the reason I stopped you initially why I stopped you is you made the turn at the five way. Um, you, there's a solid, there's a dotted yellow line there and you totally like, oh, okay. it was in the middle of your car. I am a Cincinnati police officer too, if that makes a difference. I don't know. <laughs> Where are you coming from? Uh, we were downtown, Loving. In an attempt to avoid the consequences, she immediately informed the police officer that she was also a police officer, subtly suggesting a way out due to her professional status. Little did she know this strategy would have serious repercussions. The police officer, undeterred, confronted her, detecting a strong smell of alcohol and noticing her slurred speech. Okay, and your, your speech is slurred, and you had your gun on you. I'm not putting that in the trunk, but your speech is slurred and everything. I don't know what you want me to do. I can't just... I, I see your badge, but I'm telling you, your speech is slurred. You smell, you reek of alcohol. What, what you know, you put me in a bad spot. You want me to drive home, officer? No, this is, no, that's not how it's going to work. You got your gun on you, too? I do. All right. We're about four blocks from our house. Yeah, In the car, Caton's husband, Patrick, who was intoxicated, suggested that he could drive instead. But the police officer firmly stated that they would not escape punishment. Tensions escalated, and the situation at this point became dangerously volatile for everyone involved. Despite their objections and constant references to the presence of cameras recording the entire incident, the police officer remained steadfast. I don't understand the circumstances right now, okay? No, I don't. You don't. I mean, everything's recorded. I can't, I can't just do nothing now. Okay. You guys both reek of alcohol. You were sleeping, passed out sleeping when I Who pulled was? you over. I was not. Okay. That's fine. Wide awake, okay. Man. That's fine, but you, she's slurred and everything. I can't just. No, she's not. You do, no. officer, that's you do what I, you gotta that, do. That's why, yeah, that's why I drove, because I was fine. Okay. okay. Well, let's do this. All right. Step yeah, on out with me and talk to me. We, we, Sir, crossed, we crossed a yellow line while we were driving. You do what you got to do. I, and I, I have to. You understand that? I have to. It's not that I want yeah, to. Yeah, you do. Okay. Hold on to your ID. How long have you been a cop? Pat, Pat, stop it. Stop. Sir, you've got your gun on you and you're intoxicated too. Just I am don't, not. Don't. I am not. Pat. She just said you were. That's why she drove know, home. She didn't. She said that's why no, she drove no, home. I said, I no, don't know. No, she drove home because she's not intoxicated. You do what you got to do. Well, here's now, now here's the problem. Two is that you've got your gun on you. Where's that at? It's on my hip. It's on your hip? Okay. All right. Miss Manda, step out with me real quick. Okay? Just talk to me real quick and we'll go from there. He requested Caton to step out of the car for sobriety tests, emphasizing that he was simply doing his job. However, Caton refused the walking test, citing her high heels as an excuse, a feeble attempt that did not deter the police officer. You yeah, know the I'm circumstances, saying, okay? Um, I've got another officer coming to back me up because you both are armed and all that stuff, and he's agitated. Um, I'm just going to check your eyes and make sure you're okay, and we'll go from there, okay? okay? Now, do you have any head injuries or anything? Uh, no. Are you epileptic or diabetic at all? Mm -mm. You wearing contacts for color or anything? No, but I'm not going to take any kind of... You're not even going to let me do HGN on right. you? Right. Okay. All right. Well, and why is that? Well, I mean, you can do the H whatever, but I'm not... I've got high heels on. I'm not going to do okay. any... 
All right. And, and that, that's fine. That's, I'm going to wait till my buddy gets here, and then we'll talk about it. Um, regardless, I'm not charging you for the gun. What? Regardless, I'm not going to charge you for the gun. Okay? I'm not going to do that to you. I mean, stay right here. Throughout this challenging period, her husband still inside the car remained drunk and armed, making the situation even more precarious for everyone. So now I'm going to start the test. I just made sure your eyes were uh, tracking equally. All right. Then, the officer is seen acting helpless as Caton clearly didn't pass the test, refuses to do any other test, and consequently, he would have to charge her. Despite all of this, it's worth noting that the husband is in the car, drunk and armed. You got gym shoes in the car or anything? No. <laughs> right, you know you've had too much to drink. You know you drink too much to drive. We live just down the street. I understand where you live, but you know I... But I haven't had too much to drink. Well, you're at Cindy's. As the police officer conducted the test, Caton clearly failed to pass and adamantly refused to participate in any further assessments. Faced with no other choice, the police officer made the difficult decision to arrest her for driving under the influence. His disappointment was evident. Police officers are entrusted with upholding the law, not violating it. The confrontation didn't end there. Get you home tonight. Okay, we'll get you home regardless tonight, okay? But I am going to have to arrest you for drinking and driving tonight. Okay. Okay? Um, so let's do this. Put your glasses on or in your pocket. I'm going to be nice and handcuff you in front. I have to handcuff you. It's our policy for transport. Do okay. you have any other weapons on you or anything? No. Okay, so let's do that now. We'll talk to your husband, and he's going to be mad as a badger, but... Okay. What district are you with again? You're in... Uh, I'm in just moved to inspections. Okay, well, hopefully, hopefully we can get through this just easily. It's county. We'll do our best, okay? You are county or Loveland? No, I'm Loveland, but I'm saying it's going to county court. Claremont County Court, so... Now, do you, you say you have no weapons on you or no. anything else like that? Okay, I'm going to advise you of your rights, just as I would anybody else, okay? okay? You have the right to remain silent, you understand that? Anything you say can will be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to an attorney and have one present with you during any question. You're unable to pay a lawyer, one will be appointed for you prior to any question if you so desire, okay? Let's have a seat in the back of my car and I'll talk to your husband. We'll park the car, we don't have to tow it. I don't want you to fall down, it's slippery. When the police officer informed Patrick about his wife's impending arrest and her refusal to take a breathalyzer test, the situation spiraled into chaos. Are you kidding me? No, don't keep your hands where I can see them well, for you. Because you said you have your gun on you. Hey, knock it off. I'm, dude, I'm, I'm doing the best under the circumstances, OK? You're, you're starting this whole traffic stop because we crossed a double yellow line while making a left-hand turn? Well, a couple times, but that's the one that drew my attention to her. Okay. That's what I was telling her, OK? Yeah. We can argue about this. That's what court's for, if it goes that far. Are you really if she tests, this? If she tests under, I'll just bring her home. No, she's not going to do a test. Okay, well, that's up to her. She's not going to do a test. Okay, well, I'm not charging her for the gun. I'm not doing anything that. What the hell? What are you talking about? You're what are you talking about? No, I said I'm not going to. What? Why would you? Because she's intoxicated carrying a no, firearm. No, she's not. Okay, well, then she can do the test and prove no, that. No, she shouldn't. Okay, well then she... Why are you pushing this issue? Because I have to. I'm not losing my job because You're I'm letting someone go away. Job. You don't know how this works here. Yes, that's how it works. Uh, yeah, I do know. If that. I were to let her go and... Why didn't you arrest someone that you thought was... Four, a blocks, four blocks from our house. I've arrested people in their garages before. It's uh, okay. not the point. All right. So, what's your plan? What do you mean, what is my plan? Well, I can park the car here and we can give you a ride home and then... We'll drive Look, her home when we're done. I don't want to ride from you guys. <clears throat> you do what you want. Like. 
that. Patrick chose to walk away, leaving the scene entirely. Ultimately, Caton was charged with OVI refusal and centerline violation, facing the legal consequences of her actions. This incident serves as a stark reminder that not all instances of law enforcement officers resisting arrest involve alcohol. Sometimes, it's the very individuals tasked with upholding the law who find themselves on the wrong side of it.